Morning guys, how are we doing? Hope you're well. So this morning we're going to talk about um, how to run a 100 miler or how I'm running a 100 miler. I'm going to share my um, conditioning, or how I've built up my conditioning, how I've managed my nutrition and how I've built up my mindset so that um, in June when it comes to me doing my second 100 miler, um, I'm able to do it uh, in under 24 hours, which is the target, which is the goal. Um, if you do come on and you're watching this live, please do make sure you give a like, make sure that you do comment, get involved and engaged with the show. So, 100 miles. Um, the first time I ever attempted this was um, back in 2016. And back in 2016, um, I also was the same time that I was writing my book, It's a State of Mind. And it was also the time that we had Alba. Um, and my training was very restricted mainly because I couldn't really go too far away in case my partner needed me to get to the hospital. We had an early due date. So um, I kind of used those excuses and, well, you know, um, and I didn't really get a lot of training done. I didn't really quite get a lot in. And um, I ended up suffering on 100 mile. I got my tactics wrong, got my strategy wrong. You know, I was going for 24 hours. I ended up doing 27 hours, 20 um, so that was three hours off. Um, I took off. I got to. I went way too quick. I got to sixty miles, and uh, crashed, and really fucking burnt. Really burnt. You know, I got to sixty miles, um, in something ridiculous like twelve hours. I think it was something like twelve, thirteen hours. It was some something around that. But then it took me. Uh, it almost took me another 14 hours just to do 40 miles. So, um, yeah, I definitely crushed and burned there. So I left it. I said I would never do it again. And then I fucking signed up for it again last year. Um, so we are now three years on. Okay, we're now three years on. And I need to put it to bed. You know, putting it under 24 hours is, is really important to me. Originally, when I did the, tw the 100 miler, it was because um, I wanted to see if I still had that mental fortitude to be able to do something that was so far out of my comfort zone, um, whether I could handle it mentally. And uh, in 2016, I completed it and I did. And I, 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 probably, I probably jumped the hur hardest hurdle physically that I've ever been in because I've never quit anything. But I was very, very, very close at the 60 miler mile, thinking that I Fucking, I can't go on. Um, and then I met this guy who asked if I was all right, and he actually picked me up and said, let's go, and got me going again, um, which led me on to meet in this other group um, who who ended up getting me through, which I'm still not sure if I would have made it all the way through <laughs> um, if I had not met that group. But this time round, um, I'm much more prepared already. Um, I'm really putting the work in a lot more. I've really made it a priority in my life. Um, so my training started last September and I hadn't run really for about a year and a half. So I had a lot of work to do. So in terms of conditioning, um, I would start uh, very low on mileage. So we'd be doing four mile runs, three mile runs. And um, in September, I ended up running something like 56 miles, I think it was, September in total for the month, which was good. I started my uh, a much more detailed um, mobility course, like as in I just followed a course of action every single morning and I've done the same routine every single morning and evening before bed to try and limber up. I started working gym. So um, I'll come on to the gym's work in a minute. So my strategy was September, we just get started. October, we up it. So um, September was around 56 miles. Um, October was around 66 miles. November was around um, 70, about 78, I think. And then December got up to 99 miles. Um, and then went to 115 miles in January. So as you can see, as each month goes along, basically we're progressing in miles, right? So every single time we're building up. And this is how what I always talk about with clients that I work with. You can't just go straight to running a 110 mile month, okay? 
you know, when I got to February last month, I did 200 miles. There's a lot of you, if you were following me, you would have seen that I went for that challenge. You know, I'm going to do 200 miles in this month. And that was to really cement the dedication and the training and put it all into play. And I can't be expected just to do 200 miles just like that. I can't just fucking do that from no training. And if you think about anybody that is trying to get fit or trying to get um, in shape or trying to get their life together, you can never just get your life together just like that in one month. Okay, You can never just lose that body fat and it stay off forever, right? So what happens is that you have to build up in little chunks. And I talked about this in my live last night, little chunks at a time. And as you can see, my conditioning has is increased over a um, four or five month period, six month period almost. And I'm now at the point where um, we'll end up probably running around 150 miles this month. And I'll probably keep it 150 miles right up until April, end of April. And then May will probably taper down slightly uh, and then we're ready to go in June. So it's about small steps. It's about small wins, it's about small progression. And um, by the time I do the 100 miler in June, it would have almost been um, nearly nine, 10 months worth of training, which is a lot of training, a lot of dedication, a lot of commitment, um, a lot of miles. You know, I think I would have almost done nearly 800 miles worth of training, whereas the first 100 miler, I probably would have only done not even 200 miles. So you can see the massive difference that's happening there. Um, gym work, so I'm doing a lot of gym work on my hips. So doing a lot of standing lunges with the bar, with like a, a Smith bar on my shoulder. So dropping down, coming back up, strengthening my hip flexors, my core, I'm doing deadlifts, squats, squat racks. Um, I'm doing uh, lots of uh, hamstring work and calf work. Um, and I always go very light on the weights, but I do lots of reps, okay? So I usually work in reps of 20. And I have very short amount of rest time banging, and then I put the muscle under pressure again. So we're trying to develop the muscle. I've seen muscles in my leg that I've never seen before. So must be doing something right. Um, so in terms of my training, that is my training plan. You know, um, I don't necessarily um, look at the individual mileage on each run. I try to get one big run in a week, like maybe half a marathon or 16 miles. Um, this Saturday is my biggest test. This Saturday, I am running 50 miles. So I've entered into a race. The race is 34 miles long. What my plan was to do was go and do that 34 mile, 30, 34 mile race, then run home and do another 16 miles after that race. But what I'm gonna do instead is get up at half three tomorrow morning, yeah, tomorrow morning, have breakfast, do mobility, and I'm gonna leave the house here at half four in the morning, and I'm gonna do 16 miles. That should take me to registration. I'm gonna register, I'm gonna have about a half an hour wait, which is gonna be a bit of a nightmare. Um, and then gonna run my 34 mile race. Um, I'm taking my dog, Digby, and, uh, and then that will take me up to my 50 mile target that I'm aiming for. So then bang, I hit my 50 mile target and I will know exactly where I am in terms of my pace strategy, um, the pace that I'm running at, is it sustainable? My nutrition, my body, my mind, um, and to top it all off, we've got lots of rain and wind going on as well, so it's gonna be tough conditions, which is what I want, and uh, we're gonna see how we get on. So it will be a real test. I don't, I'm not really too fussed about it, I'm just gonna crack on with it. It's just another training run, that's my mentality, but we'll come on to that in a minute. So nutrition, so what's key for me in the mornings is making sure I have breakfast. So just before I talk to you guys, I have breakfast one, which is just toast and cereal. I then go off and do, do this, stick it on the emails and stuff, and then I usually go out and do either a walk or I've got a client at six till seven or something like that. And then between seven and eight, I'll have another breakfast, which is, a, which is about 80 grams of porridge and two crumpets, always the same. So that gives me about 800 calories for my breakfast by eight o'clock. And I find that when I don't have that breakfast, I'm not as, um, um, I'm not as good when I run. I'm not, as, you know, I'm not very productive in terms of my running. Um, I tend to be a lot weaker. I can tell the difference when I haven't had that breakfast. Um, and then I'm making sure that I'm eating. Um, so basically I buy 
pre-made meals for muscle food for my lunch, I have that. Uh, and then usually if I'm running a big run the next day, then I'll carb up. So like for instance, I've got my 50 mile today, tomorrow. So today's gonna be heavily carbs, okay? Gonna be heavily into carbs. Uh, whilst running, I'll always have like a little um, sandwich bag of food. And in there will be a mixture of um, biscuits, chopped up Mars bars, jelly babies. That will be my sweets. And then in my savouries, I love things like chopped up scotch eggs, chopped up sausage rolls. And whilst I'm running my 50 miler, I'll be able to take out there. And, and, and that's the aim for when I run my 100 miler in June. I'll be able to take those little snacks, little and often. Now, the biggest thing that I learned when I did my first 100 miler was not to wait until I'm hungry till I eat. Okay, not to wait until I'm thirsty till I eat. So I have a strategy that every 15 minutes, okay, uh, every 10 minutes, I'm going to make sure I take a good swig of my camelback. Every 15 minutes, I'm going to make sure I have good amount of food like nibbles and constantly replenishing the body because I think when I did it in 2016 I crushed and burned because I didn't manage or, or, or maintain or sustain a strategy in terms of drinking in terms of eating and that caused for my 60 mile crash okay so I've got to be disciplined I've got to make sure I'm checking my timings I've got to make sure that um, it, it goes with what I'm trying to achieve you know um, and just nutritionally for the last sort of six months, it's just been eating well. I haven't drunk since January, which has made a huge difference to my training, huge difference to my running. Um, you know, I'm sacrificing, um, I've sacrificed a number of nights out since, since January, including my partner's 30th, um, including another friend's um, 40th, including one of my best friend's wife's party tonight. So all been sacrificed, all been put to bed, so that can make sure that I'm 110%, you know, I'm up at 3.30 tomorrow morning to run a 50 miler. All those guys are going out on a piss tonight and enjoying themselves. It's just a level of commitment that you're willing to put into yourself. Um, you know, I'm not always gonna be in this. Normally I'd probably go out and, uh, and have fun, but you know, I really want this and this is what I've got to sort of do to achieve that goal. <laughs> okay, mindset. Okay, so mindset. My mindset and my strategy is to run it in 23 hours. If I base all of my timings on what I need to do, um, which is um, just over four, basically, I'm breaking this down into four quarters. So to achieve that, um, I need to be running five hours, 45 minutes. Um, every 25 miles, sorry, is gonna be five hours, 45 minutes. So every 25 miles will be five hours, 45 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm going to do that four times. That will give me 23 hours almost. Um, well, it would just be under 24. Yeah, it would just be under in and around the 23 hour mark. So what I'm trying to do is leave myself some fudge factor. Okay, and that fudge factor allows me extra stops, the halfway mark, get some pasta changed, um, refreshed, and then out again. Um, there's lots of little stops in the way, so you, lots of little stops to replenish your food bags, top up your water, walking up hills. So that is my strategy going into it. My mindset is that it's strong, I'm ready. Um, I'm gonna really figure out where I am tomorrow when I do this 50 miler. Um, I'm really gonna know at what stage I'm at in terms of the development and all the work that I've put in. Um, and that's really about it, guys. The reason I'm doing it is because number one I always believe by leading by example so I think um, it's not the number one reason actually the number one reason is because I want to do it for me because I want to do it because um, I want to prove to myself I can still do it and that's the most important thing um, I want to prove to myself that I can run a hundred miles in under 24 hours and if I can't then I can't you know there's no big deal I'm still gonna complete that 100 miler, touch wood, no injuries. But, you know, the other reasons is that I wanna set an example to my group in the brotherhood, to the people that follow me, that you can achieve anything, you know. I thought I'd be 40, nearly 41 by then. Um, and there's people older than me doing ultras, but I just need to show people that despite having three kids, despite having two businesses, despite trying to keep a house, keep myself entertained, look after everybody else, that you can still find time to do stuff. It doesn't have to be a hundred miler. It could be a marathon, it could be half a marathon, it could be fucking 5K. 
but it's just about getting off your backside and getting out there and getting it done. Um, and that's what it's all about, right? That is what it's all about. So on that, um, thank you for listening this week. Um, I'm going to be going live um, tomorrow just to update you guys how I'm doing for my 50 miler. I'll be on Instagram regular on my stories. Um, so feel free to join that and follow the progress tomorrow for the 50 miler. And that's about it. Any questions, leave them in here and I will come back at some point over the weekend and, and catch up with you guys. Have a crack them up. Oh, before we go, don't forget to sign up to the five day fire it up challenge. Okay. Working with me from the 1st of April. It's totally free. Five days worth of coaching, five pillars to build for you um, and making sure that you reach the higher level of life. Thanks, Vaughn. Have a good weekend, Steve. Catch you all soon.